When's the last time you've been in that arena? Uh, that's awesome. uh, we did the walking on here. Oh, okay. Oh, we had a few more today. Did you? Did we leave everybody? Yeah, everybody. No. We did. Um, you didn't. There was an email. Okay. Uh, five o'clock. Yeah. Even in the notes. Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, sorry. No. No, it was. Good evening. I think we'll uh, we'll get going here about 6:01 uh, for the October uh, we'll start with, uh, October 22nd working session. Make sure your cell phones are turned off, and we will get right into it. Haven't had anybody um, citizens forum uh, fill out any of the reports, so with that we're going to go right into the um, the reports on the board committee, starting with the policy committee. If somebody want to share that with us. Yeah. 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 There we go. We're in the process. There we are. It's a good place to be. I'm moving on to the Forest Committee. You want me to go ahead and vote? Uh, discussions in general, uh, finances, um, roughly $12,000 for lack of the number off the top of my head, but the, uh, uh, there's still a, sort of an internal audit taking place on that, just trying to back up and find out what exactly what's going on with our dedicated account. So financially, Doing what it should do. Uh, let's go on with that number. Uh, lengthy discussion uh, about tree planting um, that came up at a board meeting about a month ago. I think our last one, you know, what about the playground and things like that. And I think the discussion was take a hint. <laughs> The uh, discussion about the tree planting, there was a suggestion about putting it around the playground, other you know, spots around the school here. Um, safety concerns on the playground. Uh, once again, you need to believe that somebody's out there doing something they shouldn't, but uh, possibilities, um, kids wandering away off a playground, you know, getting further away more quickly. Uh, so kind of, and when you ask the forestry committee about that, it's all advisory because technically we're, it's not part of this whole forest. So, what we did was just had a discussion topic on that. Uh, I think we ended up, for the most part, talking about doing athletic fields, trying to get a backdrop for the baseball diamonds, softball diamonds, things like that, to get, get a little bit of an aesthetic out there. Um, and then general planting areas, other than that, uh, maples, I think, going, are still going out behind the football field or to the south of the football field, uh, but still attacking those areas that need them and the ones that will make it look better. Uh, I think the last one was going right down that County Road back to the uh, south. Um, so, future plans. Uh, other lengthy discussion had to do with using the school for us more often. Uh, we seem to get a good amount of use at very specific moments during the course of the year, whether it's classrooms uh, or uh, the occasional candlelight ski, something like that. Um, just threw out ideas that are definitely uh, soliciting the public for what we uh, would like to get more use in there. Uh, ideas we came up with were holiday events, uh, fundraisers, <coughs> you know, a hypothon, a triathlon in the winter, you know, uh, skating, skiing, uh, snowshoeing type of thing, um, but putting brochures out in the hotels or at least maps uh, for local businesses, resorts, so that people know that it's there and it's available for use. And I guess from the school's perspective, uh, we considered the possibility of using the school's snowshoes and uh, cross-country skis to make that a little more accessible and more usable. But that's sort of the general topics we covered during the course of our school meeting. Reed, did I miss anything? No. So it sounds like um, Zippel Bay might not be having their cross-country ski trails, so there may be more use. Is that, 
Is that still the consent of anybody here? Yeah, we lost our main room. Without a tell. Also, just on another note on the force, um, uh, the Phenology Club collected a whole bunch of uh, giant blue stems, a lot of native plants out there. And uh, working with Reed a little bit, we're going to hopefully here this fall yet for sure and do some dormant seating on, on, what, on that little hill that's right behind the, the bus garage. Um, there isn't anything there, but we're and we're going to start doing a little bit of native planting up there and, and keep it from getting mowed and uh, fence it off and hopefully uh, keep, get that going. Part of got those seeds from the school for us. So. Still, still going to work. We got a couple couple weeks yet. Uh, anything else? No. All right. Moving on, uh, we will go to uh, Superintendent Elementary Principal, Mr. Nelson. Okay. Um, we're currently posting two paraprofessional jobs. Um, we've had two new two students move in with IEPs, and one more qualifies, so we have a need for additional support staff. And that would be funded through special ed funding, a portion of it. Um, strategic planning and the It's it spread out um, in December would be the first planning meeting, and that's one thing that we'll have to decide here in the next month or so. Um, who wants to be involved with the strategic planning subcommittee? Um, we, probably, we probably want to have two or three board members on a subcommittee rather than having the full board in on those. So that's something to, that we can decide by November on how, how we want to do that. But December would be meeting with them, um, just getting a feel for the process. Um, and then they would be back like in, I think he was talking about March, February, March. Um, they do some surveys, they do some listening session, and that can be at, at two days in a row where they might come one evening and do a community one, spend the next day. Um, pulling in some students, staff members um, during the school day as well. Um, so it's pretty comprehensive gathering that information from the public. So yes, it could be consecutive, but it could be, it's going to be spread out over a number of months or so. Well, I think you suggested that at one point they to get some input from potentially the party board members. Before. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Enrollment update, I believe that's in working session. It's, we're at 480, um, which is really good. Keep in mind a portion of those additional students are our four-year-old EPK, voluntary pre kindergarten students. Um, and that's something that's new last year. Um, but some of those additional kids are counting those four-year-olds. Um, but still, enrollment is steady, if not moving in the right direction. Um, I did have a meeting, and I, I sent out information uh, regarding uh, bus route concerns on one of our routes. Um, the transportation committee will be meeting with Reed and myself tomorrow evening to go over uh, my conversations with those parents, and we'll discuss how we're going to proceed and problem solve the issues that are on that route. And then in November, we'll report out to the board at the, at the working session. Um, parent letters regarding potentially controversial curriculum was requested that we collect letters going home to parents of textbooks or things in the classroom that could potentially be controversial for some parents. Um, Mr. Novak and I 
past your staff to submit those. I haven't gotten any in the elementary, which is good. <laughs> um, but I'm sure there'll be some in the high school. In fact, I know Mr. Novak's collected some. Um, he's got a paper copy of them, and he's keeping a um, electronic copy on Google. Um, how does how would the board like that information shared? Do you want copies of all those letters that each teacher might send home? Um, could you put them on a drive, copies? like a, one of the team drives? We could put it on the team drive if, if you wanted that way, or that way they're accessible. Okay. And then maybe just a little email notice that when they're posted. Yeah. They're posted. Okay. Or you know, and then. Is everyone okay with the team drive? Yep. Uh, we'll set up a team drive for that. And, and that way you have a head of person going home. So if you do get a call, you're kind of aware of it then. Yeah. All right. And then one thing that I did not list, it just came into my mind, um, on MDE is the school report card. And with the new um, assessment process with ESSA, um, one of the things that they're adding is kind of a school highlights thing. Um, with the theory that right now all the school report card is is on testing and assessment. And there's we all know there's a lot more that we do for kids at school. Um, so I sent out an email, I'm going to ask the board as well, um, to send me ideas or things that we, we have 1,200 words, which is space we're given, to kind of highlight all the things that Lakewood School does for our students that might not show up on a state assessment. You know, I'm making school for us and, and the phenology club, stuff like that. So there's things that come to mind shoot me an email and we're going to sit down here and then just or so and try to come up with some kind of concise statement with all that information. Summer school should be a highlight down here. The fresh water. Yeah. So I, mean, I know I'll forget it. So if you have ideas, just send me a text or an email and I'll try to look that into your writing. I think that's all I have unless you have any questions. Um, also in your pile, I have our meeting, board meetings and subcommittees uh, for November, and I added December um, with the Christmas holiday. Just a reminder, December 17th is, is the board meeting. Um, also, um, I tentatively set Tuesday, November 13th, for the school board canvassing of election results at 7.30 a.m. Can you check your calendars and make sure that would work? Tuesday, November 13th. It's been a couple of years since I've done it, but it's, it's a pretty quick, easy process. Did you set it at 7 in the morning? 7.30? Or do you want to go 7? No, whatever you guys want. That's what we've done traditionally. We can do a different time. We have three to 10 days after November 6th uh, is that in. So make sure this is what I post on the thing and then as we update it, we, we repost it. But stand there on the bottom of my weekly reports to you at the that's all I have. If you have questions. The questions? Now we'll uh, continue moving on with the uh, business office. Uh, Crystal. Um, I just think a little update on the audit. As you guys know, the auditors for Last September the 24th through the 27th, they were actually in the office, um, went through all this stuff, and now we just kind of went back and forth with other questions they may have or requests they may have. 
and it went really well this year, it's really moved them. So I'm happy with that. And they're planning to be here at our November board meeting to present. So we'll know for sure then. And in the next, hopefully by the end of this week, we're going to have to be here to have a teacher lunch and all that for me to start posting. So we're going to have an idea here in the next couple weeks and then we'll be here to present to the members. At the workshop right now. At the workshop, yes. We're going to have them present at the working session. So then we have the TNT hearing. So there's a fifteen thousand dollar check written out to them. Is that what I saw? I think I'm remembering that in front of me. That's an inflated number for this year, correct? It goes down a little bit next year. It goes down a little bit next year. This year it was a little bit longer process just because they're new this year. So they they kind of went back a year for sure to see their Brady Marks had ended and this, you know, do a little research on what certain languages need to be done, what kind of, you know, what different things for all school districts are a little different. So this year is a little more extensive than it will be going forward. So it takes a little more effort this year. It's been a very positive working process. Yeah. It's been a new Can you ask that one really any question? But yeah. Fresh water. Keeps getting, and I saw all of there were checks on me to go to the check budget on that, but we're paying fresh water out in October, and, uh, and, but that's something that we benefited from in August or July or whatever. Uh, how does that work? Uh, and I also am under the understanding that we're getting some funding from that somewhere else. Well, it, yeah, we so we get all the funding from the state for that, and then they, in return, bill us for 90% of it. So we keep 10% of the funding. They get 90%, and then with that, they pay for the teaching staff and all that for them to be here. And as far as billing, it just takes her that long to get all the MARS numbers and all that reported to get the bill out to us. So that's why it's a little delayed. It just takes her that long to get everything reported that she needs to, and then to actually input us. She being like a central repository in Minneapolis or somebody who's well, they're in their Burgess Hall, but yeah, it's like the fresh water district has, you know, like their own office that they do. Her name is Chelsea, and one of the other calls. And that's just, that'll be done at the end of the month, and everything should be cleared up and right, for this until month. next year. Right. Okay. Yep. Anything else? If not, we will. Um, Hear from my high school principal, Mr. Novak. Well, good evening, everybody. Um, just a little report, first of all, on homecoming week. We had that the, um, the first week of, of October, and uh, it's a very hectic week, just some major, some uh, minor changes. Instead of having coronation on Monday, we wanted to have it on Wednesday, and I thought that went over really well. It just allowed us to have more days just to prepare for homecoming. Uh, we have our infamous uh, dodgeball tournament on Monday, especially on Sunday, and then we, uh, we go right into the, the coronation, and it's just, it's just real busy. So um, I thought it was a very good week. Um, football one, volleyball one, I mean, it's just uh, it's an all around uh, uh, good week for us. Uh, Veterans Day program, we are going to have it on Monday, November 12th, and it's going to be at 11 a.m., so 11 o'clock in the morning, Monday, November 12th, and I've already chatted with Rick Rowan, and what we're going to do is we're going to have the veterans come and eat like we did last year, and then the VFW will pay for all the veterans that, that do come and eat. And that's where the veterans can and the families can sit with the kids and, and we can have a meal together like we did last year. Um, upcoming We Day event, uh, We Day Minnesota is not going to happen this year. I don't know if they didn't get their funding, uh, the Excel Energy got more expensive, but we were able to get invited into We Day Manitoba instead, which is going to be closer and so it's a, it's a one day trip. And so that's going to be Tuesday, October 30th, and we actually got more tickets. So we got 40 tickets. Uh, five are going to be for chaperones. Uh, actually, four are going to be for chaperones. We'll be Don Krauss, Janelle Lowe's, 
um, uh, Tammy uh, Dobler and, and Sue Paul, um, Paulson are going to be the chaperones. And we'll take off at 5.15 in the morning, and then we'll come back at a roughly 7.15, 7.30 at night on that Tuesday night. I know there's going to be a, um, a Copper Street uh, brass performance, which is 7 p.m. Um, on, on Tuesday the 30th, correct? Yep. And so hopefully we, we would like to be back before then. So we might, we might push this a little bit, uh, not so many breaks to get back. But um, we know that is, is truly a, it's, it's, it's a great thing. It's, uh, it's called, basically, it's Bears United, um, and that is our, our, our stud group. It's our student council group and National Honor Society group all working together. And there is a learn of land between all the different groups. Uh, but we will be bringing 36 students uh, to that. So, any questions? I have no idea who's presenting. I am. Uh, this will be a new thing for us. Uh, the reason why I'm not going and Janelle knows is going is because Janelle has been there before. Over at the MTSS, MTS bill, um, so I think that's where the um, when the picture is. Cool. And the last thing I want to talk about is, uh, I'm sorry Mr. Superintendent, I just added this on there. It's ACC testing uh, national versus uh, national versus district. Um, there is some concern. ACC testing they offer national dates, so they offer dates now in July. They offer dates. Uh, we've got this October, this this Saturday, the twenty seventh. We've got a national test here. The students go online and they 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 sign up for this test. They do all the work. They do all the filling up the forms. All they do is they come here and they take the test. And any of the other dates, they can look up um, Bemidji, they can look up Laurel, or International Falls, or Rosa, and they can uh, actually they can offer tests. Uh, December, January, February, March, April, May are the different ACT tests. We just do it once in October, and then we have what's called district testing, which is in April. And that's where all juniors that want to take the test, they basically, they're here in this room taking the test. So they don't have to drive anywhere. They're here in their own school. They're not in a in another place or another another room at another at a university. So they're in their own school taking the test, and that's what's called national test. And then uh, I will meet with all the juniors, and all the juniors will say, "I'll send everything home," and the juniors will decide whether or not they're going to take that test. Free and reduced, if they're free and reduced meals, they could have a free ACT test. They, they, and that's, that's the power of having the national the district test versus the national test. Any questions on that? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Novak. Um, next, activities director, Mr. Abel. You see wrestling on there, we can pretty much take that off. There's no student that was interested in wrestling. Uh, the parents were going to commit to taking them to and from practices and everything. We had it set up with Black Cup last night. We had a meeting set up and the family decided not to pursue it. They just said it was too much. The young man decided he didn't want to have to go through the whole process of making new friends again and melding with another team again. So. That was what was going on with wrestling. I'm just not here. Coaching, we've got uh, uh, Kurt Storbeck on every track. Uh, we hired him as head track coach. We are still looking for a junior high boys basketball coach and a JV um, hockey coach. Um, we have people who say they're going to apply for that and want that position, but we don't have any applications in the yet. We're going to have a JV hockey team? Well, assistant hockey. So, a JV slash assistant. Um, and then I got an email from Katie Piper. They're anticipating 18 to 20 junior high girls this year. Um, if those numbers are that high, we may have to look at finding a second coach for them. That's just too many for one person to handle. Um, we don't have volleyball girls that many, so I don't think that it would be fair to have that. 
So we'll know more about that uh, next Monday because that is the Women's Sports meeting. So we'll have a better idea of exactly how many kids we should have coming out then. Um, so that's the coaching update. Otherwise, all our other winter coaches are either going to be returning or already approved, and we'll get all those contracts to you for the November board meeting. All sports, we're wrapping things up. Football plays tomorrow night in Kelly or in their first uh, subsection game. That's the 2 7 game. So, as potential to be a close game, just depends on the hard team decides they want to actually compete. <laughs> uh, volleyball plays at home this Thursday against the winner of the Bagley Industry. And then they will, if they win that, they'll play on Friday against uh, probably the Monoman or Clearbrook. And if they were to win there, they'd play on Tuesday the 30th with everything else going on on Tuesday the 30th on the um, Junior high teams are all done. Their seasons are all wrapped up, finished. So we're going to support the meetings next Monday. So that goes on there. Um, one other thing, the health inspector did come out and did look at the concession areas. Uh, they did send us a report, which I will have for the November meeting as far as what they what he had to say about our concession area open to football football teams. So you know, I have that information uh, with look up as well. And that that's pretty much it. In terms of a JV hockey coach, how does that protocol work? Do you put an ad out and then select from a group of applicants or do you wait for rentals and friends to come to you and say I'm not put an ad out and for, uh, for applicants. But if he brings a person to you and says, "This, I'd like this guy," they still have to go through the application right. process. And but if there's more than one person, and even if there's only one person, they've got to go through the interview process. So he can be on that interview committee to have a say. <clears throat> um, we still have to go through the poll. I understand they're having to go through it. Just I have that question about whether he's come to you. Yes, okay. and that person that he says wants to do it still has not. But we're going to make sure that we have higher quotes and yeah. signed yeah. contracts. They're, they're not getting paid till they apply. Yeah. Yeah. Now, with the JV, okay, so we advertise and hire for a JV or coach. coach. And if then we do get to the point where we have JV, then they are responsible for JV. All right, that's what I was going to ask. Like reverse. <laughs> so that's higher for JV, and then if there's no JV, then they go to the varsity assistant. Yeah. And then if we do have a JV, they would be responsible for game coaching the JV. That's the same position we're looking for for boys basketball. That's the system slash JV. So either way, we can have this. Thank you. Uh, moving on, building grounds and transportation. Uh, Reed McFarland. Okay. Um, let's start out with that. There we go. Let's start out with the playground. Um, we had an inspection on our playground this fall, and and uh, the inspector had made mention that our playground material out there was very well decayed and needed to be updated or removed and regraded and drain tiled and fixed up the way it's supposed to be. Uh, drain, the chips out there are typically good for 10 to 12 years. We're looking at 16 years now. We've outlived them. Uh, Every time we go out there, we drag them around and we did it again the other day. We try to keep them up in shape, but they're, they're, they're past the end of their life expectancy out here. So, in your board packet, I, I don't know if you guys get an estimate of around 50,000. That's just an estimate. Um, but that's something we don't have to prove tonight or anything, but it's something that I want you to know that's coming up in your future. We should be looking at doing something with the next. Do these guys have to have some any special playground official certification or anything? Yes, or? they do. Okay. Uh, you have the, the people that write it up have their certified playground inspector. 
I have that certification on the phone. Uh, it's something that we've just kind of been trying to slide by for quite a while. And it's one of the things I'd like to do is set up a meeting <coughs> with the buildings, grounds, and walk out there and look at a lot of things out there. In the last year, we've had, uh, last winter was really hard on the playground equipment. We've had four or five pieces there staring to crack up on top and stuff. And, and uh, playground, playgrounds are expensive. And uh, we went out there and grind ground off all the cracks and stuff, so there's nothing sharp that keeps the keeps your hands on or anything like that. But you need to look at it because some of the stuff is, is pushing the edge of compliance. You know, and uh, it's something that we really need to look at. So I'm going to put into a long range pile to replace some of the equipment or, or just replacing parts. But, um, and then another thing that came up was the, we have a disabled student in school here, and uh, we were going to add another swing set for that individual. Uh, and the concern came up as to whether there's accessibility to it. Legally, there is accessibility to it. That's we can use playground chips rather than e rock or some of the other things that. January, so that will be completed with stainless steel material. And then we're putting variable speed band in there, so it will modulate the way it's supposed to, depending on how many letters are running. Uh, and then that last thing is something that came up kind of real fast. About it, is I'd like to get some type of board action on part of the fence, the LED lighting inside the store. Um, at the end of September, we had turned in uh, every day for, I think, $2,700 for our start on LED lighting. And here they were, uh, there's a new date. You guys see it here. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be $2,700 for the first year. Yeah. And then there's so much for wall packs, so much for cell halides. There's so much for different types of walls and stuff. And I was turning in a rebate out there at Marsgar, and, and uh, Wayne told me that they were going to be having a meeting soon, and he said he thought the rebates were going to be done away with. Well, with uh, probably about 7,000 bulbs, and that's a lot. Um, so at that time, then I, I went around and I counted all the bulbs, went from classroom to classroom, class to class, 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 class
really still have enough in the school that we have a release in from about five thousand four hundred eleven foot four foot balls in our school we haven't released yet. Uh, Wayne did a couple a week one week later and he told me that they had, had the meeting that it was decided and it's for you guys to send personal on too that the rebates are going to be going away January 1st, 19. The rebates are going to be cut in half for all lighting. January 1st, 2020, they're going to be done away with completely. Uh, we have been not in a hurry. We've been running everything to die on the lighting rather than trying to replace it all at once because it's a big cost. It's coming into uh, effect. Um, if we were to expedite it and not run the vaults to the end of their life, which vaults are, are basically a hydro vault, um, if we were to expedite it, we could realize the $27,000 saving that, that, that it would be at $5 a vault if we were to buy the vaults now. If we were to wait till the first of the year, it would drop 13000 if we wait for 15 months from now, there's no repeat. So there's the $27,000 goal on there. Um, that would be buying the vaults off state contract. Um, after I found that out, I called Solis for buying them off state contract and uh, we discussed it and they said they'd come down another 41 cents a ball to if we were to buy that, that, that kind of volume. So that's better, yeah. Uh, he also made a mention to me on, I think it was the 10th of uh, this month, that on October 14th, this month, is when the new tariffs went in on um, all these things purchased in China and stuff are going to start costing us more. Uh, on our balls, it would cost us 15%. So if we hold off until the tariffs kick in, which was October 14th, they said they'd still honor this price right now, uh, it will be another $9,000 to do it. So you said it would save 41 cents, but how much would it cost? So looking at the total cost for, for the retrofit, it would be $34,600 providing a net cost. A net cost. $61,000 minus that $27,000. $63,900 minus the $27,000 and the $2,000. Get in that cost thirty four six thirty. Are they the ballast bypass style? They just the wrap? Correct wire. Yeah, they was you bypass from the ballast okay. and, and the home screen is on the DC current. You do have a write up cable to the updated vision. Because that would give us the savings as well. Yeah, by passing the ballast. You have less things to go wrong and slight reduce reduction in energy, so or savings would be even more. Since we started this school, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing. Since I started here back in uh, 95, uh, our, our electricity cost here at the school was about $200,000 a year, and now it's just over $100,000 a year. Now you'd wonder why 25 years, and recently this has been a lot of cost saving measurements. And think lighting, for instance, and this would be another move towards that. Um, when we started here, like a ball, four bulb fixture here, they're all 40 watt bulbs in there, so they're running 160 watts in the Dallas and each one is 2.2, so you'd be burning 164 watts per fixture. Uh, we just we did the auditorium on Thursday and Friday. Thursday and Friday we finished it up. With the new lighting in there, we're running with two bulbs instead of four. And they're 16 and a half watts. So you've got 33 watts with low balance. So you've dropped from, you know, you've dropped about 80 percent. And it's 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 the right thing to do. It's it's going to cost us money right now. It's going to cost us. It will cost us 34 thousand dollars just in bulbs. But it's it's money that we're getting back. So we're looking at Jeff and go, can we afford this now? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> no, we'll look at um, if the board rules it. We would look at it at the holiday. We have a reserve fund there. Uh, the yeah. So we have the money available. This will take a big chunk of it, and there's lots of other projects. But I think um, if we act now. Um, it's my mind it makes sense to act now. Yeah, because we're saving 29000 just on the rebates. And if we wait much longer, it's going to be another. Because we're shifting over anyway. You're doing it slowly right. already. Right. So. We would have done it in November, but we don't want to wait because okay. it's going to cost us an additional 15% with the tariffs. Yep. As long as they'll honor this, I think we should. And, and this is the kind of story. I mean, North Star going to honor I talked to yes, I talked to I talked to Wayne out of North Star and I said, you know, there's no way we can do this typically they have the lights installed before you can get a rebate. And the reason they do that is because people will go buy vaults, buy them and then get the rebate and then they turn around and sell the vaults and the vaults won't go in there here pretty confident the school isn't going to go out and sell them all to the not. And they said that they would honor that rebate. And they knew it was going to be coming To the post, yep. Okay. And I also called them, which was made into the next, to the next thing. That was the indoor lighting, uh, our outdoor lighting out here. We're running 400 watt metal highlights out here. We've got 51 minutes out there. Um, if we were to replace if we were to replace those heads out there, uh, there's an eighty dollar rebate per head right now. We can buy them through Gray Bar for four fifty a head. Um, that'd be twenty twenty two thousand nine hundred and fifty. There'd be a four thousand dollar four thousand eighty dollar rebate if we were to buy them now. Uh, and uh, otherwise We'll pay the regular amount. I don't see where the gray bar has to let me know. So it would be it would net out at eighteen thousand eight hundred. Um gray bar hasn't said anything about the deal with the, what the new pairs are going to do to that yet, so I don't know anything more. It's just those uh, that with low setting was where the pairs is going to go up on. So there again uh, you know that's a decision that we have to make with them playing with LED out there. We would place some heads out there with LED right now. Um, we're confident in the head that we want to use out there. We'll try to avail you here three three different heads out there. Two two different Yeah. And that's what we need to agree by. So that would be another thing there would be a, a a large energy savings out there also. Um, and there's a four thousand dollar rebate if we move forward with that. And it's better lighting. It's by far better lighting and the thing that the thing that the school suffers when we have a color number or anything out here in the of the metal halide is metal halide has to cool down before it'll light up again so you can be dark out here for fifteen minutes. And uh, the new lighting set what we're doing is we're not really in my photo eyes, it's all on a GPS through astronomical timer. Yeah. yeah. And so we won't be coming by during the day and seeing a bulb on here and a bulb on there and a bulb on there because the bird crashed on the photo line. And that's basically what it does. And that's what birds like to sit. They like to sit, you said? I did sit. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> But tonight we're just asking you to consider the, the indoor LED lighting and that post will bring back in, we have till January. Right. So we'll bring that back in November. Right. So tonight it's just uh, <laughs> It's kind of, a, it's kind of a, I, I felt like it's kind of unfair in a way that it's all of a sudden we're just pushing stuff really hard when it's something that if North Star had 
and hey, man, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to give everybody. You got three years to do this, you know. And, um, and as a matter, matter of fact, I don't. Maybe I didn't hear it at the North Star meeting the other night when I was there, or any other person. It was very, very courteous of Wayne to tell me that this is coming to an end, or it came to an end, and all that. All. So the rebates do not go away on the whole project? Rebate, all rebates on lighting from North Star will be gone in, in, in 14 months. There will not be a rebate on lighting anymore. Not right now. Let's <laughs> <laughs> make another thing. Yeah. Reed, if, uh, I no doubt we're. Um, what was our initial goal? I mean, no doubt we've been phasing in these LEDs all the time. What would have been our, before this, excuse me, before it came to light, but if, uh, what, what would have been our goal? I mean, how long would it have been to get to where we're trying to get to now? It depends on what that bulb burn out the scope. This is what we've been doing. This we've been replacing with LEDs to burn out. So we take an area of the school. We have 300, 400 use bulbs. and. We take and put them down on the end, and when I'm used bulbs are burnt up, we had retrofit another area. And I thought we could go through the whole school that way. And it would take, it would take, you know, maybe 10 years to do that because some of your bulbs aren't burning eight hours a day. You know, you've got a lot of bulbs in the closet. Probably what percentage of LED you have right now? Just guess. 10%. Okay. There you go. Uh, are you happy with them? Uh, I mean, there's different bulbs, different brands, different colors, and all that other fun stuff. Just make sure you get the one you want. It's just the nice right. of the bulbs that we have, and I, and I had encourage all you guys to go into the auditorium when we'll be here tonight. You just go and put the light switch on and know that we've only got two bulbs and four light fixture in there. And you've got a lot more light than you ever did when we came out with the 430. So. Can you keep it from all of Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's, that's another big thing about the LED lighting because it is so much lighter and it, uh, uh, we are turning less bolts on. Yeah. So it's not just how much you see in the lot, it's just seeing that. Another thing about LED lighting is that uh, some, some staff members have in the past complained about the flickering of a fluorescent light. It bothers a lot of people, especially if you get migraine headaches and stuff. The LED lights and cleaning aid have got to do that. Because it's that pulsing light that bothers the I do have a correction on the right up. So the recommendation for the administration is please purchase with the LED light bulb at a total cost of $61,685.40. That's what we're going to be spending here before the rebate. We are anticipating savings of twenty-seven thousand fifty-five for the rebate. That number, the real cost is sixty-three thousand nine hundred and three. But the court has has the volume rate reduction on it. Yeah. So yeah. we're approving the sixty-one thousand six eighty-five forty. We will pay out of that. But then when the rebate comes back in. The rebate is typically on the these bulbs is on you send you a check. The rebate just be a credit oh, sheet, that's right. credit to your account. And then so what would happen is you show you paying on that sixty thousand ten for how much is that like to About ten grand a month, so over the next there'd be a line item on the bill or something though I would think showing the rebate. Like yeah. Credit. Right. Yeah, that's right. You probably have a zero month sale. Right. For a month. Well, we need a zero month sale. Yeah. Right. You see that big seven month bike, you need to actually get it back over three months. Yeah. You're going to reflect something in the general fund in the long haul. Yeah. Not in the way. Not in the half of the general fund. Not like you're going to get a check, but you are. That's money that you're not spending. You know, we're being kind of protected on the capital. So we may want to, when those rebates come through, is there a way to transfer? Yeah, you can transfer. You can transfer. Yeah. Yep, but once you transfer, then it's there. You can't take it back out. So. But that's something we can consider when it shows up on the bill. I mean, just one other thing I'll add to, I've been looking into some of the stuff for the county. Um, the cost is still there, but LED prices have dropped considerably. There's probably a little bit more to eke out of it. 
but I think we're at that happy point where it's effectively as low as it's gonna gonna go. I mean, there's not gonna be any cost savings waiting for the technology to become less expensive and everything else. So I think we're at a point where it makes sense to buy it, and especially with all the other reasons. One of the, one of the reasons they're doing away with cost rebates, right now you can go down and buy used to be $5 to all the sales offers, and then finally they're putting in a $5 fall for the cost of the fall. A lot of the falls now are, are a buck, buck and a half, two bucks, you know, we're only eight falls, so they only give you the cost of the fall. And that's one of the reasons you're doing away with the lighting is because the price of the falls has come down to the point where um, it's cheaper to go, go buy an LED now than it is to go buy a different fall. Uh, one thing I do want to say about this, though, if, if you guys do move ahead with this, is yes, there it, it does require a retro kit on the halls, and the retro kits right now are 433 per fixture. That's for the end pieces, I assume. Right, yeah. because you've got to change out two zones and again, so you're going to direct fire and get away from that. So we do have that cost, and and. Um, We'll try to do it all in house, but we're going to have to have an electrician here as my a master to sign on. Hopefully, we'll have some hours in here, but the physical labor is probably going to be done in house. So. Okay, any questions about that? Or, yeah. Yeah. Can we do the buildings and grounds meeting tomorrow after our presentation? Sure. Thank you, Reed. Um, finishing up, we will uh, community add the food services, uh, Mr. Cole.
But we decided to change the, the pool rent to 150 dollars a day, and um, on the other aspect, it's just going to be more classes or training. So uh, have any birthday parties that just rent full pool. And a reading for the end meeting last Wednesday. comments, concerns? If not, we will uh, close the October 22nd uh, uh, working session right at 7 p.m. Do I need a break? No. What are you doing for music? Admissions of a one-man band. The harmonica and the <laughs> All right. Uh, no other concerns on that. We will uh, start the uh, the meeting uh, with the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moving along, we will have the uh, approval of the agenda. I need a motion and a second to approve the agenda as presented. I'll make a motion. Motion by. I will second it. Any further discussion? Um, the one that we're adding here for uh, Reed and his light bulbs, mm -hmm. uh, that's specifically for the $61,000 package, not the other. No. Any other questions, concerns? Um, 
All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion is passed unanimously. I need a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda item as presented. Make a motion. Make a motion by Johnson. I'll second. Second by Corinne. Any further discussion? Uh, by Felman Correction. My fault. My hearing aids are up as loud as they go. I'm assuming that Kurt Trebek's salary was covered in the budget. Yes. Perfect. Maybe I read that and saw that. Any other questions, concerns? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion is passed. Um, board presenters, I don't believe we have any. Um, Written communications, civil rights compliance letter. Yeah, in your packet, and that was an uh, ongoing thing uh, that Cindy did a lot of work on. Uh, but we, had, in your packet, there's a letter confirming that we complied with the civil rights stuff. Um, so we should be good to go. Okay. Moving on, in the, in the old business, I have a motion and a second to approve the second reading of policy 509. Uh, the enrollment of non-resident students. Make a motion. Any motion by Johnson? I'll second that. Any other questions or concerns? Any further updates on the uh, process? Nothing, no blowback, no feedback, no... Nothing. Diane Lane's got a getting close on having a process of reaching out to parents to update their Information. Okay. We haven't lost any enrollment, so no litigation. Mm -hmm. No, that is something once the policy is set, then we'll, then after that we will set the tuition rate. Any other questions? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion is passed unanimously. And part of the old business uh, be a report on superintendent evaluation and growth plan. I think that was included. Everybody got to look at that. Okay. Moving on to new business. I'm, I'm sorry. Do we want to go home with anything? Yeah, if you want. Okay. Uh, you want to discuss the goals or? No, I'm trying to, my memory's not good, but we did go over your specific goals at the last meeting, right? I mean, we talked about, I'm trying to remember if it was on the record or off the record. It was, we closed for the evaluation, and then what's supposed to happen when you open it back up, at some point you need to report out just a summary of the evaluation process. And we had discussed using the goals and saying these are the areas that I would be working on. Right, so I'm just wondering, that's my memory problem, but for instance, Woody, would you be aware of how that superintendent evaluation went? Do you have any information in the back of your head that came from this table? And you'd probably like a little bit? Is that fair? I mean, I'm more than happy to give a quick summary, but... I'm trying to find it in my back. Well, I've got it right up here, but... Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, we did. We did. Uh, we tried to, a different process this time, Woody, just because everything that we've been getting from the MSBA seemed rather uh, confusing. Uh, the Mar Marzano situation, we struggled with that. I think is a word, which is how they evaluate teachers or how they uh, process teaching evaluations uh, with this. Superintendent, this time we simplified it somewhat and just established three goals that the board felt was important, three goals that were important for him to uh, work on over the course of this contract. So over the course of the next year, actually, not even contract, really, it's just each year, and then sort of uh, prompted ourselves to make sure that that got reevaluated once a year. Part of his job is to kick us a little bit, you know, a year from now and say, all right, let's get this done again. Let's not, because we managed to go two years and in the prior 
uh, superintendent evaluations where we're missed sometimes for as much as three years before an evaluation will pop up. So now all of a sudden you're throwing something at a superintendent that he's never even been directed to. You know, he's not aware that he's even asked. So, I mean, and, and I'm willing to give you sort of a quick overview of it, just the three goals. The first goal, the superintendent will effectively oversee all financial operations of the school district and prepare, present, and recommend the various budgets and programs to the school board. I mean, I think the whole financial picture is something we're, we're really focused on at this point. We want to get out of the deficit spending role. Um, and then we uh, gave the superintendent direction on three separate issues where we wanted that to improve. And I think it's a little drier. And then beyond that, three separate situations where there would evidence be evidence of that success having occurred. So goal and goal number two, I mean some you could figure it out in terms of the finances, but for instance, a positive yearly audit, for instance, what's coming up at the next board meeting. Something like that uh, would be an indicator for us or evidence of us that he was doing a good job and improved uh, the school's financial position. What do you think Hmm? You can get a copy. You can get a copy. I'm just running through the process. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else who's out there sitting, I'm just trying to be somewhat transparent. I'll just goal number two. We wanted him to pro provide leadership and maintain positive working relationships through effective communication with the board, the staff, and the community. Seems obvious, but once again, you know, something we felt that we needed more uh, directness on with the community and with the staff. Uh, and then same thing, indicators and evidence that would support all that. Uh, and then finally, the superintendent will institute and update a comprehensive strategic planning process, including short-term, long-term planning, school district goals, instructional goals. The superintendent will monitor the district's progress for the achievement of these identified goals through evaluations and data collection for continuous improvement planning. So once again, a foresight as well, which is something we'd like. Specifically, you saw tonight of the MSBA strategic planning meeting that we're working on, and he's head manning that. So once again, another evidence. So that's how we've instituted as a board for evaluation the superintendent. So now we have something a year from now to go back to and say, all right, let's provide evidence, and we this is what we wanted. Did we get it? Okay. We decided to keep him around, overwatching him. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Yeah. Anything else on that? Now we'll move on to new business. I need a motion and a second to approve the staff seniority list for 2018. Sorry, do we, need, we don't need to have a motion to accept that report. No. no. I need a motion and a second to approve the staff seniority list for 2018-19. Um, I'll make the motion. And I will second it. Through the discussion, everybody got a chance to look at it. I believe there is one correction. There was. Um, a teacher who was the first hired in 2011 and other teachers were hired in 2010. And the ones that were hired in 2010 were behind her on the senior list, but she was a previously tenured teacher at another school district, so she was on the senior list ahead of that. So Jeff and I talked, and we decided that we were going to go by hire date instead of senior. Seniority is based on initial hire date. Yeah. So even though you have non-tenured teachers, Hired in 2010, they're not actually on the seniority list until they've completed their until they get their fourth contract. But they're still their seniority based once they get tenure on their initial hire. Go past that initial. Whereas a teacher coming from another district that started in tenure only has one year probationary, so they don't get to come in a year later and ask all those other people. I was going to say, I thought I remember there was some guidance on. That whole thing. Yeah. So we go by the initial hire date, um, and that goes into force once they have uh, one tenure. When once your tenure. Makes sense. Yeah. How do things like a variance or maternity leave, something like that, does that? Uh, there's statute on maternity leave on how long, and it's within certain numbers. It doesn't. Necessarily impact their year of service. I can't quote them on the top of my head, but there's guidelines as far as 
variants. Um, but then they would be tenured. They're not tenured. Yeah. Um, but once once they achieve full, it's tricky now. The tiered yeah. licenses. If they're hired under a certain tier, it's really the variances aren't there technically as they were before. So if they a tier one and they move up to the next tier, um, my understanding is once they are fully licensed, then their initial hire date would be the, when they were first hired. That's not the same way. It had to take something that was ambiguous with one variance to make it absolutely confusing. It used to be simple, and I could be wrong, but it used to be simple because the variance used to be for one year. Yeah. And then, so you had one year variance, and the next year you start over again, and you could do that up to three times. And I'm not sure if it's still going on. That was when you terminated that feature. Yep. 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 So it's, it's a little bit. It may be the tier one still the same, and I'm not going to look at that. It's still the same as I recall, but it's, you're definitely going to have to get guidance. I know we've talked about this a few times. Yeah. <laughs> did, um, did, did, um, did, um, were we made aware of this by those employees that were affected by this? I just had an email this morning. From one of those employees? From the employees. Will those ones that are affected have to be signed? The Resolution 2018-19-04 to accept a donation of $500 from North Star Electric Cooperative for the Backpack Program. Motion made. Second. Director Rim. Thank you. Any further discussion? If not, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Um, motion is passed unanimously. I need a motion and a second to approve the purchase of LED lights as presented by Mr. Uh, by Reed McFarland today. I'll second it. Motion, okay. And a second. One. Thank you. Any further discussion that we need to have on that? No further. On board with that? Everybody concurred. I think it's a smart idea, and I'm glad we thought of it now. So, it's inevitable. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 The thing I'm concerned about is you get a another chunk, for instance, of this $18,000, you know, the next chunk, and the next chunk. I think there are things inevitably we can do all the time here. So, somewhere in there, you have to pick up the big ticket items. I'm not so sure, you know, we couldn't walk around and say we need to replace that, we need to do this, and, you know, today we get the benefit, I guess, of the cash that we have. Well, I guess, had that not come up where the, the rebate ended, yeah, I would have kept on 
Queen. He just mm-hmm. just right shut her and continued to drop. And, and, and Queen was going about it in the most intelligent manner. I mean, it's unfortunate that to throw a bunch of bones that are working, but. Well, that's where I'm getting struggling with that part because he said 10 years old. So all of a sudden, we're at a five year bone, which is what we're getting, right? Five year bone, I think I heard him say that. So we would have gone through zero balls in the time that we're going to buy at least one more ball. You know, he's yeah. like, like a closet. So, you know, yeah. here, I don't know if you go around and say, I'm not going to do this closet. But, you know what I mean? Where you could actually save money by not doing it because the closet never gets turned on. You're replacing a hole. Yeah. You just make them the last ones you do. Brent didn't bring up a good point because there's nothing official yet, but... I would think the writing's got to be on the wall sooner or later where the county's going to have to start charging for these bulbs to be disposed of. Like a four foot bulb is roughly cost the county a buck to dispose of. So, and it's unbelievable the number of four foot bulbs that the landfill gets. I mean, yeah, they're all over down here. Can yeah. you sell them that is it? I don't know. Yeah. I don't think anybody tests to see if they're good. We don't sell them if they're good, do we? The school. If you can get your bones in a dump, you can put them in that these bones are going to come grab them, and if anybody wants to grab them, they can grab them. Yeah, they might. You might have some colleges that would take them and actually help my budget if it worked that way, but if you don't have to do it all, the whole church is allowed to do the lot. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. And that's actually going to be a better one. Yeah, can we get a call out on that? Is the school able to donate? We'll look at the way mm-hmm. We can't cash in on it, well, benefits on all of it. Any other questions? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion is passed unanimously. Any other business we need to address? If not, meeting is adjourned at 7.17 p.m. Thanks. Can I turn these off now? Mm-hmm.